Welcome back to my channel. My name is Tanya. Today we're going to be doing my October TBR. I am so excited about this video because October is such a magical and exciting and fun month for people who are young all the way to the old. I feel like that Nat King Cole song, I think it is the, you know, the Christmas song, Chestnuts Roasting on an Open Fire from ages two to 92. I don't know, I always go off on a tangent. But welcome to the spooky reading month. Of course, we're gonna have varied genres as per usual. I like a lot of variety in my reading diet. So expect some classics, some magical fantasies, folklore books, I think, nonfiction works, and just a whole bunch of genres. You guys already know how I roll. I am so, so excited to film this video. I have a very robust list of books here. I have some that are in the library system and some that I do own physically. Don't even worry about it, you guys. I've already poured you guys a hot cup of water so you can add your instant coffee, your cocoa, your tea, some honey, or if you just want hot water, which is totally doable, you know, it's good for the throat and good for the digestion, you can do that too. So I have a cup ready for you guys. With that being said, go on and get yourself a snack. I'm hoping this video doesn't take too, too long. I am a blabbermouth and I also have one for myself. Oh, it's kind of hot, as you guys saw. Isn't this just the most precious? It's the stars for me. Look at that. Oh, it's so pretty. My nails are not it. Don't even look at them. But yeah, the orange color. I don't know why anyone would not love this season. The colors, the amazing movies, the autumnal reads that you get into. I know a lot of people are mood readers this time of the year, but I'm so excited to get into this. Let's talk about some of my physical books. We'll jump into my Libby app where I have my library books. I also have some physical books from the library and we'll go back to the physical books that I do have here with me. And of course, if I can find the sweater, I'll link it Hello. you guys know how it is sometimes certain things get sold out really really early so it's good to kind of pick these things up long before spooky season is here because you know people are going out trying to find this stuff but yes let's go ahead and get started oh my gosh sometimes I hit the record button and I feel like I've never as is as if I've never recorded a video before oh before we do continue I do want to thank you guys oh so very much for all the love on my cozy autumn guide insane it blows my mind I am so grateful and I'm so happy to have finally reached a thousand subscribers I'm at like maybe 3,500 right now it's just insane <laughs> And I'm so, so happy and so grateful because it is a lot of hard work. But with that being said, I wanted to do a 1K Q&A. So if you have any questions for me, they could be bookish questions or not, please leave them below. I'll also make a community post asking that as well. So you can have it there and I'll be collecting them. And hopefully we can do a 1K Q&A before the end of the month. Okay, I've already talked way too much. People are like gone. Like get to the books already, right? I know. <laughs> 
So the first one that I have here on the docket is The Girl Who Drank the Moon. It's just for me, this this just kind of screams October to me. I don't know, like the cover itself. I've been wanting to read this for so, so long. I tried to do it during a 24 hour readathon. I tried to have it during my September TBR video to try to read it during September. So hopefully this will be one that gets done and dusted for the month of October. This is about the girl who drank the moon. <laughs> so it says here, every year the people of Proctectorate leave a baby as an offering. Oh my gosh. I'm always like shocked because it's like, I don't, you know, know a lot of what these books entail. I, I typically see them on other people's, you know, recommendations and I'm like, oh, that looks kind of interesting. You know, and I don't particularly remember what they're all about. So it says here that they leave this baby as an offering to the witch who lives in the forest spooky. They hope the sacrifice will keep her from terrorizing their town. But the witch in the forest, Zan, is kind. She shares her home with a wise swamp monster and a perfectly tiny dragon. Zan rescues the children and delivers them to welcoming families on the other side of the forest, nourishing the babies with starlight on the journey. Oh, my, I didn't know that this was what this was about. That is so cool. Okay, so The Girl Who Drank the Moon by Kelly Barnhill. Hopefully we can get that one completed. Guys, I have this pretty epic Harry Potter vlog, if I do say so myself. There are a couple of New York sites that I went to and I'm still working on getting that video edited and getting it published out to you guys. But I do wanna say The Chamber of Secrets. This is my sister's copy. It is the Mina Lima edition. And of course she hasn't opened it yet, but you can imagine it has all of those fun pop outs and interactive little, um, um, uh, guides in a sense. It's so, so beautifully illustrated and designed. And of course, this is the second book in the Harry Potter series. I am slowly making my way through all of Harry Potter. I am so sorry for people who are waiting for the next chapter to see exactly what the heck happens to Harry. So, so sorry. But yeah, I'm trying to see if I can get this video out for you guys sometime in October. I have lots of spooky plans and lots of videos planned for this month. And also, oh my gosh, I think I might start a book club. I don't know if you guys would be interested in something like that. I was thinking of starting it in October because I have quite a few new subbies and I thought we could read as a group, as a cozy friend group, because you guys are somewhat, you know, my internet friends. So let me know if you, <laughs> so let me know if that is something that interests you. There are options on Fable, completely free to join. I know that a lot of people do Patreon book clubs as well. So I don't know which option would be best for you. And of course the book club will be completely free to join. I'm so excited. I don't even know if you guys have any names that kind of correspond with coziness and Huga, cause I always try to exude that, you know, feeling in my videos as well as Atlas, the Greek God. Let me know. I was like Atlas Literary Society. I've just been brainstorming for the longest time of a book club name, but let me know if you guys are interested in that. One of the masters of spooky, horror, suspenseful, eerie work is Edgar Allan. Oh, I mean, look at his sullen face. That forehead, those eyes, that interesting messy hair. He was doing it long before anybody knew it was cool. <laughs> Edgar Allan Poe, I got this book a few years ago. This is a, it was a happy accident. We don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. Um, so this is Edgar Allan Poe's Illustrated Tales. There was a video that I did a couple years ago called The Mask of the Red Death. I did the reading for that. The video did pretty well back then. So I will link it again if you are looking for any autumnal and spooky atmospheric reads. But yeah, this one is so, so beautiful. It has a bunch of different stories on here and a few illustrations by Harry Clark. And I don't know which one we might read this year. Maybe the Tell Tale Heart. Try to say that five times fast. Babbling, bumbling band of baboons. Try to say that five times faster. Now to dance is to let the body. Matt, you see, I can never speak. Silence, a fable, the black cat, Lygia, the man in the crowd, murders in the Rue Morgue. That one sounds actually really good. The pit and the pendulum, the colloquy of Monos and Una, the raven, of course, iconic. So nevermore. So yeah, we do have Edgar Allan Poe here. I say this was a happy accident. I didn't even finish my thought. I see that this was a happy accident because I was trying to get like his full thick volume, which we do have. It's my sister's. Um, and of course I'm able to borrow it, but yeah, I, accidentally bought this thinking that it was a much larger uh, piece of work, but it's not, I and mean, that's okay, right? That's totally fine. This, I kind of call this section a little bit of leisure reading, a little bit of light reading. So I have this steampunk book here. 
it says steampunk the beginning i just think that it'd be perfect for this month because of like the dark grungy you know industrial look of it all so it says here steampunk the beginning features more than 90 illustrations depicting characters and scenes from three seminal steampunk novels Haman by James Blaylock, Infernal Devices by K.W. Jeter, and The Anubis Gates by Tim Powers. So it's just like a whole compendium, so to speak, that's one of my favorite words, <laughs> of different illustrations and little bits and bobs of steampunkness. So we call this leisure reading because I don't have to think much about it because it's really just a glorified picture book. And the other leisure reading that I have, oh, it's over here. I got this a couple years ago at a Barnes. It's the Hocus Pocus book and it's illustrated by Gris Grimbley. I think the name is Griselda. I just think the name is so cool. So if you guys know the Sanderson sisters, they come and <laughs> terrorize this town. Look how darling these illustrations are. Yeah, so I think most everyone knows about the Hocus Pocus and how these witches basically come out to Salem, Massachusetts, and we're just following their interaction in a sense with the town and all things Halloween. So it says here, having just moved from sunny California to Salem, Massachusetts, that kind of reminds me of Sunnyvale, Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Teenage Max Dennison doesn't understand his new town's fascination with everything Halloween. When he has an opportunity to impress his gorgeous classmate, Allison by visiting an old house where a trio of alleged witches once lived, Max jumps at the chance to prove he doesn't believe in the town's superstitions. He lights the black flame candle, accidentally releasing a coven of malicious witches, the infamous Sanderson sisters from the afterlife. So very excited to see if I could also comfortably and leisurely read this whenever I don't wanna pick up a classic or a work that I might be a little frustrated with. Oh, I, I don't think I've ever seen the hardcover. Guys, this is a, no, this is iconic. I just don't want to rip it, you know? Okay. Wow, this is beautiful. Look at that. I've never seen this and I've had this with me for like two years. Isn't it gorgeous? Wow, wow, wow. And it's like foiled. So it has a little bit of a gleam, a little shine. Loving that. Oh, that's perfect. So yeah, this is great for a little bit of a downtime when you just want a lighter read. I've been really into Shakespeare these past couple of months and I've been chipping away at his works. One day I will read all of Shakespeare, God willing. <laughs> So I do have this bad boy back again. We're trying to see if we can do Macbeth. I mean, if you know anything about those three witches, when shall we three meet again? Oh man, <laughs> that was one of my very first videos on booktube. I was so excited about trying to read Macbeth and never happened. So this is my opportunity. I, I know that line, but I, I'm just like, it's getting stumped right now. Somebody might say it, you know? <laughs> When shall we three meet again in something something's, oh man, I feel so bad. I usually know that line really well. It's like the beginning of the, the story. So Macbeth on page 858. Let's see, let's see, let's see. It's not that I have to read it, but now I feel like I must. Here's Othello and Macbeth. Okay, here it is. Act one, scene one, an open place, thunder and lightning. Enter three witches. First witch. When shall we three meet again? In thunder, lightning, or in rain? When the hurly burly's done, when the battle's lost and won, that will be ere the set of sun. Where the place upon the heath, there to meet with Macbeth. Gray Malkin, you know, you know the thing. I almost dropped it, y'all. It's okay. Again, I'm gonna shout the book out. It's such an iconic book for me. Like one of my first purchases. <clears throat> Heavy. Okay, what else do we have? You guys don't mind if I move your cup of water, right? Isn't that like the cutest thing? <gasps> Look, it's like a ghost handle and a pumpkin mug. Love, love, love. I'm gonna set her down here so we don't have any accidents over the books. All right, let's give the physical books a little break and see what we have here on Libby, my library app. So excited. She's just so excited. Okay, so let's open her up as per usual and see. This is probably the section of the video where you're going to recognize, I mean, you could recognize all of these actually. A lot of this work is famous, Harry Potter, The Girl Who Drank the Moon, Shakespeare, et cetera, et cetera. But, but this is, I feel like trendy booktube stuff, you know? So I have a section here where, of course it's my holds. They are basically ready to go. I've just kind of been delaying them, but like two weeks or something like that. So I wanted to make sure that I had access to them. I typically 
basically send the books right back if you're not using them let them go so other people can enjoy them but some of the things that I do have on the docket and I'm not quite sure where I got the recommendation from. I'm so bad at that. I watch so, so, so many awesome creators and booktubers that I just, I'm always jotting things down on Amazon, on Goodreads and on um, uh, Libby. <laughs> Hello. Anyway, so I have this one book here from Michael McDowell. It's called The Elementals. It says here, after a bizarre and disturbing incident at the funeral of matriarch Marion Savage, the McCray and Savage families look forward to a restful and relaxing summer. Oh, it's a summer one, okay. But it still sounds pretty good. At Beldam in Alabama, excuse me, on Alabama's Gulf Coast, where three Victorian houses loom over the shimmering beach. It kind of works for me. As I said, I'm in South Florida. I'm like uh, just a couple of miles away from the beach. So I'm kind of close to Alabama too. The feeling of kind of the summer heat is still going on, not to kind of get you out of the mindset that it is fall. It is fall, of course, but it's still quite hot where I'm at. Don't mind the sweater. Somebody on uh, the Cozy Autumn Guide were like, do you have the AC on? Are you gonna be okay? I was like, don't worry, girl. I blasted it before I hit record. <laughs> but thanks for your concern. I love you. Okay, so so these families, they look forward to a restful and relaxing summer at Belle Dame, where three Victorian houses loom over the shimmering beach. Two of the houses are habitable, while the third is slowly and mysteriously being buried beneath an enormous dune of blindingly white sand. But though long uninhabited, the third house is not empty. Inside, something deadly lies in wait, something that has terrified Dauphine Savage and Luker McGray. What kind of name is that? Luker? It's like Luke with an R. <laughs> so stupid. Since, sorry, if your name is, you know, Luker, I just think I've never heard of that before. It sounds so silly. It's like Anthony, 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 you guys know that thing in Mean Girls. Her name is Caddy, Caddy Heron. Where are you, Caddy? That's me. It's pronounced like Katie. My apologies. I have a nephew named Anthony, and I know how mad he gets when I call him Anthony. <laughs> Almost as mad as I get when I think about the fact that my sister named him Anthony. It's like, you know, and that's also a great Halloween movie, by the way. Mean Girls. So Dolphine, that's giving me Dolphine, American Horror Story, the Dolphine in New Orleans. I actually got to touch that building. I was like, should I do that? But so creepy, that house. In Nola, ooh. So, um, so something that has terrified Dauphine Savage and Luker McGray since they were boys and which still haunts their nightmares. Something horrific that may be responsible for several terrible and unexplained deaths years earlier and is now ready to kill again. So it's a haunted house story. Horror. Okay, what's next? Let's see. Uh, uh, uh. The very secret society of irregular witches. I feel like there's no need to say what this is about. This is a romance, fantasy, fiction story. Somebody says this is the one of the coziest reads of last year. Oh, oh it's from Emily Henry, <laughs> who I have very convoluted relationship with. But yeah, she said this is one of my coziest reads of last year and I find myself thinking about its enchanted setting all the time. Yeah, I heard that it's very like found family. It just sounds like such a cozy, cozy read, a warm and uplifting novel about isolated witch whose opportunity to embrace a quirky new family and a new love changes the course of her life. As one of the few witches in Britain, Micah Moon, you're always giving the coolest name. Micah Moon knows she has to hide her magic, keep her head down and stay away from other witches so their powers don't mingle and draw attention. And as an orphan who lost her parents at a young age and was raised by strangers, she's used to being alone and she follows the rules with one exception, an online account where she posts videos pretending to be a witch. She thinks no one will take it seriously. I'm like, girl, mm, you're exposing yourself. Okay, here's another one. It's called Wilding Hall. That one is supposed to be be about a mysterious death of a lead singer. And uh, it's like, you know, like English country house, dark secrets, that kind of thing. I don't want to read every last thing or else this video will go on forever. This one I'm so excited for. The Unfortunate Side Effects of Heartbreak and Magic. So this is by Brianne Randall. And just the first line is like, sign me up, sign me up. <laughs> For the fans, or for fans of Practical Magic and Gilmore Girls, the unfortunate side effects of Heartbreak and Magic is a debut novel that explores the shields we build around our hearts to retain our own magic. That's all I need to know. I don't wanna go into the, you know, fully aware of anything. Let me quickly grab this one, which I purchased a couple of years as well by Alice Hoffman, Practical Magic. You guys know of the iconic movie with Nicole Kidman? Nicole Kidman? Oh my gosh. Yeah, right? And of course, Sandra Bullock and the Croatian handsome guy and the other handsome guy and the two girls and the two aunts. Guys, 
That's Nicole Kidman, right? Stepford Wise. Wow, I'm just blanking. That's okay to not know these celebrities. They're not, you know. Let's, let's stop right there. Don't wanna say anything horrible, but yeah. Practical Magic by Alice Hoffman. You guys kinda know what this is. For more than 200 years, the Owens women have been blamed for everything that has gone wrong in their Massachusetts town. Jillian and Sally have endured that fate as well. As children, the sisters were forever outsiders, taunted, talked about, and pointed at. Hi, you wanna play? It's not that they hate you. It's that, well, we're different. You win! Oh, win! 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 You're a bitch! 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 Their elderly aunts almost seem to encourage the whispers of witchery with their musty house and their exotic concoctions and their crowd of black cats. But all Jillian and Sally wanted was to escape. One will do so by marrying, the other by running away, but the bonds they share will bring them back almost as if by magic. Love that. Okay, so excited. There's a lot of, I, I feel like a lot of this can be done pretty quickly while you're, you know, doing your diamond art kit. Maybe you might put on the audio book or get cozy on the couch and you have maybe a cozy movie going on in the back, you know, or a TV show. So yeah, I feel like a lot of these are not too, too long. So I'm so excited for all of this. Let's see if there's anything else. I do have Wednesday. It's a novelization of season one. It's by, it's by Taylor, Taylor. Teller, K. Magia. I have Macbeth by Joe Nesbo. Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. Deep Water by Patricia Highsmith. We'll talk more about those in another video. I have a particular kind of book recommendation video for you guys that'll be coming out very soon, I'm hoping. <laughs> Ooh, because I do have this as well, I have The Third Gilmore by Kelly Bishop. That's on the docket as well. And let me see if there's anything else because I wanted to make sure that I let you guys know because if you find some of these interesting and you research them and maybe they weren't on the docket, maybe you'll pick it up. Josh Mallerman, he has incidents around the house. That one's supposed to scare the bejesus out of you. I talked about it in my Cozy Autumn Guide and I'm kind of nervous just a little bit because I don't do well with terrifying things. Whenever I'm watching a scary movie my, or a TV show, my family knows when things are about to get a little spooky, a little suspenseful, a little jump scary. I'm like, I don't like this. I don't like this. Mm -mm, mm -mm, I don't like this. I can't. I can't. I'm a bit of a chicken when it comes to things like that. You guys, the September TBR will be wrapped up into, excuse me, not the September TBR. The September wrap up will come with the October wrap up. I'll do them together at the end of this month or early, early November. But yeah, I'm gonna kind of um, merge them together. The Diary of Ellen Rimbauer by Joyce Reardon. So excited for that. There's also Brenna Thumler's Sheets. So excited for that. It's supposed to be a comic graphic book. And it says here that uh, Marjorie Glatt feels like a ghost, a practical 13 year old in charge of the family laundry business. Just a book cover like that reminds me of Casey Affleck, uh, Affleck's movie with, um, I can't think of her name right now. She's so pretty, but um, she was the girl with the dragon tattoo. She was in her, she's Joaquin's Phoenix's wife. Oh man, I can't remember her name. Anyway, whatever. It reminds me of that movie, Ghost. It's so good, it's so good. But yeah, it says here that she feels like a, a ghost, a practical 13 year old in charge of the family laundry business. Her daily routine features unforgiving customers, unbearable PE classes, and the fastidious Mr. Silver Tuck, who is committed to destroying everything she's worked for. Wendell is a ghost, a boy who lost his life much too young. His daily routine features ineffective death therapy. Try, just try it. Try to say that five times fast. Death therapy. Just try it. <laughs> yeah, tongue twister. That's like an embarrassing thing. Death therapy, okay? A sheet dependent identity and a dangerous need to seek purpose in the forbidden human world. When their worlds collide, Marjorie is confronted by unexplainable disasters as Wendell transforms Glatt's laundry into his midnight playground, appearing as a mere sheet during the day. Okay, we're gonna stop there. We're gonna stop there, okay? All right, I think, I think that's it. Intermezzo by Sally Rooney. We'll probably end up talking about that for my November TBR. I also have Haunted Ever After by Jen DeLuca. I saw everyone talking about it and it just looks like a cute little fun read. And do you see those palm trees? Again, we are bringing that tropical islandy southern feeling, you know, like the heat. I like the way that the sun is shining bright in Haunted Ever After. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Ooh, and I also have a, oh, 
everybody's talking about this one too. And do know that this is such a, uh, I was gonna say contingent preliminary, uh, I used this word before, but whatever. It's it's ever changing, ever you know evolving, meaning that I don't have to read everything here. I'm just giving you guys these as options, as recommendations, and as possible books that I would like to read. If I remember the word, I'll <laughs> write it out here. So this one is called The Spell Shop by Sarah Beth Dirtz. I'm so excited for this. The cover is so pretty. It's like, is there a puzzle that I can do like this? So it's a romanticy fantasy and romance <laughs> debut of a lush cottage core tale full of stolen spell books, unexpected friendships, sweet jams, and even sweeter love. Okay. Join Keela, the librarian, and her assistant Kaz, the sentient spider plant. Oh, I was like, is she in love with a plant? You never know, these books are crazy. Uh, as they navigate the low stakes market of illegal spell making and the high risk business of starting over. This sounds like gambling. This sounds like crime. Oh my word. Oh, there's another one. Another creator was talking about We Used to Live Here by Marcus Clywer. Clywer? I'm just scrolling down to see. I have so much. Okay, that's it, that's it. That's it for Libby. Let's close that up. Ah! I'm so happy. I'm done. Just like over, I don't wanna. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. As you can see back there, I have Dracula and I have Frankenstein. Let me just quickly grab them. Those are gonna be the classics for the month. So excited. So yeah, I just, I'm in love with this kind of like graphic, punchy, bold, cartoony look. So thin. This book can be read in like a day. Dracula by Mary Shelley and uh, Dracula by Mary Shelley. Frankenstein by Mary Shelley and Dracula by Bram Stoker, which I have never read. I've never read Dracula, but of course I've read Frankenstein. Frankenstein, Frankenstein, whatever. If I cannot inspire love, I will cause fear. Dun, dun, dun. So cool, huh? I just, oh God, look at this. They're so beautiful. They're so beautiful. Okay. So those are some of the classics. Here's another classic as well that I wanted to get into. I just stole this from my sister's area. <laughs> the Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde by Robert Louis Stevenson. Iconic, I've never read this, so I'm very excited for this as well. All human beings are comming commingled out of good and evil. That's what it says on the back. I feel like this is another book TV type of book. This is by Alexis Henderson. I'm thinking this is dark academic a little bit. So this is um, an Academy of Liars. When I was reading the synopsis, the little blurb, I was like, dang, this sounds really crazy. Lennon Carter's life is falling apart. Then she gets a mysterious phone call inviting her to take the entrance exam for Drayton College, a school of magic hidden in a secret pocket of Savannah. Love that certain books are just set in different, like unexpected, unassuming places, like Savannah, New, New Orleans, Florida, Alabama, you know what I mean? It's like, it's not always the United Kingdom. It's not always some British school, you know? So. I appreciate that. It's not Scotland. Nothing's wrong with those places. Ireland, you know, spooky, autumnal, it just screams, you know, autumn. But I do like a different change of uh, scenery. Anyway, so she has been chosen because like everyone else at the school, she has an innate gift of persuasion, the ability to wield her will like a weapon, using it to control others, and in rare cases, matter itself. After passing the test, Lennon begins to learn how to master her devastating and unsettling power, despite persuasion's heavy toll on her body and mind. She is wholly captivated by her studies, by Drayton's lush, moss-draped campus, and by her brilliant classmates, but even more captivating is her charismatic advisor, Dante. <laughs> who both intimidates and enthralls her. We're gonna stop it there. This is another version. This is a penguin black spine of uh, Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. I have some short stories to get me by. It says here, detective, uh, gothic fantasy, detective thrillers, short stories. Got this a couple years back at Barnes. So we might dabble in that. Oh, you guys, so I'm gonna cover my address. So this is a book from the library system. I'm not sure which book this is. Let me see exactly what it is. I don't know if it's like a, like a summer book or you know something for the spooky season. Oh gosh, it's, it's Beach Read, guys. We're gonna move on from that. <laughs> we'll move on from that. Um. You might know that this movie has come out, The Wild Robot by Rob, uh, by Peter Brown. This guy's Robert Brown. Another sweet kind of cozy, pa, possibly fall book. So I have that on my list. 
This is a little odd, and this is another one that maybe people have been like, what are you doing? But I don't care. I got this I Spy kind of book. It's, it's like a Can You See What I See book by Walter Wick, who's like one of my favorite photographers, I have to say. He does amazing, amazing work. This is perfect for the season if you're just trying to pass some time and get off your phone or something. Yeah, this is just basically a kind of like search and find kind of thing. So much fun. Look how beautiful these illustrations are. I really hope that it's focusing because I can't see the camera. But yeah, I'll try to pull some up on here so that way you guys can see them like i just i get so happy about this i get so so happy about this so yeah i just feel like this is a great little kind of spooky thing when you're looking for bits and, and bobs it feels like you're kind of searching through a dusty attic but it's just a book that you don't have to worry about anything creepy crawly coming out or getting dust spores all up in your lungs so yeah i just thought that this would be a great autumnal activity as well as book to include in this uh tbr I already talked to you guys about this book by Joyce Reardon. <laughs> I'm laughing because of her end. The Diary of Ellen Rimbauer, My Life at Rose Red. This is a library copy again. Love, love, love. Hope that's in focus for you guys. And I think that's it. Guys, I think that's it. What do I do now? Wow, okay. I hope that that wasn't too, too long for you guys, but that is such a bulky, bulky list. It's probably like maybe 30 books or so. I'll have them on the description box, of course, the list of the books, just so you guys can go and take a look there. Don't forget to leave me a question for my 1,000 Q&A, 1K Q&A, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, leave me a question. It could be a bookish question or whatever kind of question you want, and I will be sure to answer it. I'm gonna make sure that I answer every single person. I'm so excited to do such a thing. I've never done it. And I just am so incredibly grateful and happy and thankful and so surprised that over a thousand people have decided to subscribe to Atlas in a Jar. I can finally let you guys know what this is. This name is all about. It might be a little weird to some people, but in my head, it just made sense, you know? Whatever. Anyway, I want to thank you guys oh so very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and to hit that notification bell. I was gonna say on your way out, but I don't like when people say that, on your way out. Like, no. Anyway, yeah, like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And thank you so much again for watching. I'm so excited for October. I cannot wait to see you guys in my next spooky autumnal video. It always feels like I'm missing something, but I will catch you guys really soon. Bye. Autumn comes too soon